The Honorable Peter Senja notes government's contribution to the development of the Laplain constituency. The Dominica Education Enhancement Project is seeing positive results in the education sector, and the government's Yes We Care program has been hailed as one that promises longevity on the island. Thank you for joining us for another edition of National Focus. I'm Nisha Charles. And I'm Kimani Senja. Stay with us for details of the headline stories and others after this. A lot of bathtubs are blamed for bruises. Some staircases are accused of being responsible for broken bones. Doors are occasionally viewed suspiciously as causing lesions. A high percentage of tables are accused of producing bleeding or trauma. Violence against women is a crime and it's everyone's responsibility. It's inexcusable. If you're a victim or witness of physical or psychological violence or abuse, seek help and denounce the perpetrator. Thanks for staying with us. The Lapland constituency is benefiting tremendously from government's projects and initiatives within its communities. This is according to the Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Lapland constituency, Peter Sejan. One of these notable projects, according to the Lapland MP, is the National Employment Program. Over the past uh, few months, eight months, has engaged no less than 32 young people in the Laplane Dailies Poetica area. Madam Speaker, I must commend the Honorable Minister and his team for ensuring that we address the issue of unemployment in Dominica in a very proactive manner. The community employment component, Madam Speaker, is working well for me. We have a team of four young men uh, in Delis and four young men in Boedica, uh, sorry, in La Plaine, and Boedica is soon to come, Madam Speaker, who are now taking care of the in-village roads and doing a tremendous job. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative says government's continued support to agriculture has also borne fruits in his constituency. We have an exceptional group in Delis called the Delis Toloma Women in Action. And these people have placed their product on the local, regional, and international market. Madam Speaker, they are processing Toloma and Farina. And we have worked with this group. We gave them support by providing land. We have given them assistance. And these people are doing an exceptional job in every respect. Madam Speaker, we ensure the provision of subsidies in uh, farm inputs to boost production for farmers in Delis, Boetica, and La Plaine. Throughout the Ministry of Public Works, Honorable Saint Jean says the La Plaine constituency has also made significant progress in infrastructural development. We saw in Delis the Belvedere Feeder Road uh, over, the past five, over the past three and a half years, the construction of the Couson Link Road that links Carib to Delis, the construction of the Delis or re renovation, rehabilitation of the Delis Main Road, the Carib Road, the Miga Road, Poye Road, Madam Speaker, Laroche, the Lower Laroche Road. We have addressed a number of roads in Delis. Honorable Senja highlighted that the constituency has also seen the complete rehabilitation of the Laplane Health Center and Agricultural Training Center, while work is progressing satisfactorily on the Laplane Police Station. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative, however, could not go without mentioning government's $3.2 million water supply project for Delices and Botica, what he dubs the signature project of his constituency. The minister was addressing the House of Parliament at the recent budget debate. Government's popular Yes We Care program has been credited as one of the factors promoting longevity on the island of Dominica by the island's Honorable Minister for Social Services, Minister Gloria Schillingford. She was addressing the handing over ceremony of wheelchairs from the Dominica Guadeloupe Association 
to the Dominica Council on Aging last Friday. Honorable Schillingford noted the growing number of centenarians on the island. The government has a, a flag flagship program, as we call it, a program we call the Yes We Care program, where we ensure that the persons who are not looked after, the elderly who are not looked after, the government takes responsibility in looking after those folks, allowing persons to go and let them have a, a bath and, and a meal and to give them some sort of companionship and love and affection and attention. We also ensure that we have a number, I, we, as a matter of fact, Mr. Joseph and myself just came from a ceremony for a centenarian. And this is our 36th centenarian out of a population of 70,000 people. And so we are doing something good here. According to the Honorable Minister, the care and companionship which the program provides lends to the overall well-being and happiness of the elderly, hence their long lives. The Yes We Care program, which was launched in 2009, aims to provide personal home care to the housebound elderly and handicapped. The Dominica Education Enhancement Project, DEEP, is sowing positive seeds in the education sector. The $11 million project, which started four years ago, has transformed the education sector since its inception in 2010. The Dominica Education Enhancement Project, commonly referred to as DEEP, really was a comprehensive program project, project to address the issue of developing, augmenting the delivery of education in Dominica. A number of, we have a number of components. One component focused on teacher training and development, so that under the program, stretched over a four-year period, a number of teachers were trained locally, regionally, and internationally in different discipline, different subject areas. The project not only focuses on academics, but prepares Dominican students for the international market with the required skills for the wider workforce. The Honorable Minister for Education and Human Resource Development said that when the idea was conceived, the ministry recognized that if Dominica's economy was to expand, Dominica needed to move away from a traditional base and focus on development of the individual as a whole. You visit, say, the Dominica Grammar School, a good school, on our feast of Casablas, you would have noticed that we put in place serious pieces of equipment, industrialized type equipment, so that our young people can be trained, not just, and we say, because in the past, there was a heavy focus on the academic development of students, but we recognize over time that for a student to be marketable, prepared for the job market, you have to provide him the necessary support at the school so that when he gets out there, he can meet the market requirements. The project not only targets students at school, but is a means of retooling the Dominican workforce. Areas of emphasis under the project include teacher training, curriculum development, special education, numeracy, and maintenance. Reformation of the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association has been declared very important at this time to complement the growth of the tourism sector. This reformation could only be possible through the collaborative efforts of the government of Dominica and the private sector. That concept was discussed at length on Tuesday by Arian Perryman, Secretary of the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association, who was addressed in the press at the Waterfall Room at the Fortune Hotel on Tuesday. The restructuring is well on its way, as is engagement with the government and other stakeholders regarding the issues of our industry that our industry needs to resolve. Despite the DHTA's historic challenge to maintain the necessary and consistent support of its members and impact Dominica's ability to create the most opportune environment in policy and practice for continued growth of the tourism sector, the industry has and continues to be the greatest economic GDP contributor for the island. 
She noted that the DHTA is partnering with the DDA to harmonize and further enhance the marketing of the island. The DHTA fully supports the Discover Dominica's authorities' call for additional financial resources as effective destination marketing is directly correlated to growth in visitor arrivals. As well, the DHTA has requested and in principle has been granted a seat on the DDA board as well as a seat on the DDA's product and marketing subcommittee. The DHTA which wishes to engage DDA on reviewing its branding and marketing strategies and working much more closely with our members as we are all as we need to be all in sync in our marketing strategies. Perryman called on institutions such as the Invest Dominica Authority to establish opportunities for more investment and job creation on the island. The DHTA calls on the Investment Dominica Authority and all relevant authorities to create the much needed enabling environment with a modernized incentive program that will result in new investment and job creation. The DHTA expressed their gratitude for the opportunity created by the Honorable Finance Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, who in his 2014-2015 budget revealed the VAT on service charge effective September 1, 2014. The DHTA sincerely appreciates the government's commitment to repeal VAT on service charge effective September 1, 2014. This speaks to the government's commitment of our shared responsibility on improving the economic climate that will enable the tourism industry to grow. We are currently working in partnership with the government on improving how VAT is applied to the sector. GIS will bring you more on that press conference in a subsequent newscast. A six-week summer camp which introduced Achievement Learning Center students to the wonders of the sea has come to a successful close. The government of Dominica, through the National Employment Program, coordinated with the Achievement Learning Center to host their annual summer camp program, which ran from July 7 to August 15. At the camp's closing ceremony on Friday, August 15, the students were presented with certificates of completion and also received handcrafted gift bags for their participation. Coordinator Wendy Smith regarded the summer camp as a wonderful learning experience, which impacted students and teachers alike. I want to read a quote from Dana Stewart Squat, Scott. It says, learn as much as you can while you are young, since life becomes too busy later. And in the six weeks that we have been here, we've been young again. All, all of the volunteers, all of the adults, we've been young again. We've played in the water. We've made ocean slime. We've made sea turtles. We made divers. We made oceans in a bottle. We've also done our lessons and we've learned new ways to present those to our students and we've done some out of the box thinking. We've done some painting. Um, we've had a few cookouts. We've made a few sand castles. Yesterday we saw an incredible starfish um, and sand dollars. It has been a wonderful experience. I think I, I, my sentiments echo all of the volunteers and all of the staff that are here this summer that it's just been incredible. And we thank each and every parent for allowing their children to be here with us so that we can learn through their eyes. The students engaged in various recreational and educational activities that sought to broaden their learning spectrum in a fun atmosphere. Proprietor of the Achievement Learning Center, Beverly LeBlanc, express sincere thanks to the ministry for supporting the endeavors by providing four education mentors. We didn't know who we were going to get, but they, we had this, um, four, these five volunteers. And um, I really want to thank them very much for allowing these young people to come here and to be with us for the summer. Um, we, although we had a limited amount of students, but because of the special care that the children that we had, we had Shala, we, who has um, a disability as well as um, Darwin. And then the volunteers really, especially Shala. Shala, when Miss Cindy came, she just gravitated to Shala and she did a wonderful job with Shala and also with Darwin through um, Katrina. And we have oh, and Omari, we have some of them who have already gone on vacation, so they are not here with us today. 
but we have seen a lot of speech develop. We have seen them improving their social skills. So the presence of the volunteer really made our the other the job of the other teachers a little bit much easier because then they had other students that they could focus on. So these students, through the volunteers, these students were able to get one and one individual care, which is basically what they need for their potential. The Achievement Learning Center is a privately owned center which caters to the needs of children at risk and those who have special needs. 150 youngsters aged 9 to 15 can now call themselves computer literate. The Youth Development Division of the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports held the closing ceremony for its summer computer program at the Public Service Union Hall today, Wednesday, 20 August. The program, which ran for six weeks from July 7, held morning and afternoon classes in Portsmouth, Castle Bruce, Roseau, St. Joseph, Grand Bay and Wesley. Some of the areas covered were introductions into computer concepts, which include defining the terms of computer and other terminologies, introduction into internet, including netiquette, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Publisher, Excel, in both basic and advanced. The student created posters, cards, charts, and PowerPoint presentation. The top from every class will be viewed later. The participants also benefited from various field trips and other fun and educational activities. Cesarina Paul, Assistant Chief Youth Development Officer, addressed the graduates, urging them to use their newly acquired skills positively. I want to say to you, all of you, the children, now when you use the computer, you need to use it for the good, not for the evil. For there are many people who use computers to do a lot of great things, to create plans for people to build houses, to create planes, to create, um, I mean, a whole lot of pos possible things, to draw, to become artists at what they do, to make music. She highlighted that literacy is not limited to the ability to read and write, but since recent times also includes computer literacy. According to Bernard Bontiff, instructor trainer of the Youth Skills Training Program, the purpose of the summer program, which is five years old, is three-pronged. We wanted to do something that would um, at least, one, keep young people employed, our instructors employed, two, have something to provide for the children because we know during the summer seven eight weeks of summer of summer running around is quite a lot for the children and um you are, when you have parents who are working and they want somewhere to place the children we find we feel like it was very necessary that we come up with that kind of summer program to um facilitate things the third objective is we are in modern days computer age the world of technology and it is not too early for our children to start getting um, acquainted with the, with, the, um, with the computer. They learn some of it at school, but um, not as in-depth as we do with our computer programs because we teach them at least five skill areas that they can at least have a start. So tomorrow when they decide they want to get into, our, into the mainstream of things, then they, are, they already have that sort of introduction to get into the computer program. Some of the participants shared their impressions of the summer program. I learned how to do my PowerPoint so I could, when I, when I go to high school, I would know how to present my presentations better. It is very useful and very helpful during the form that I'm going to form where, depending on the homework that they give us, would be very tedious sometimes and it would be very useful. The young people got the opportunity to present their best work in PowerPoint presentation and also got the chance to display their talent. The participants received certificates of completion in the various computer skill programs and prizes were also awarded to winners of various sporting activities held during the summer program. And on a note of correction, on Friday, August 15, GIS News incorrectly announced a Ministry of Education summer workshop for government school teachers at the Rivers of Living Water Christian Center. That announcement was made in error and GIS apologizes for any inconvenience caused. And that's the English news. Marco Sensek Luz is next with the Creole Highlights. On the road moon, bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Le moi c'est Marco Sensek Luz. Premièrement, ministre de l'Éducation mette mise en place pour faciliter tout neuf l'école qui pour ouvrir en septembre. Parole celle-là sortie au ministre de l'Éducation, 
Honorable Peter Saint-Jean. Et présentement, nous connaissons que l'école ferme et nous avons préparé pour l'année 9. Là. Ça nous a créé de new academic year, uh, l'année académique 9. Là. Et en ministre de l'Éducation, il y a un lobby qui nous a fait. Parmi eux, nous avons essayé de payer transfer grants uh, pour ces mamans là qui écrit l'examen uh, 6 National Examination. Et aussi, nous avons. Actuellement, nous avons un l'école et aussi nous avons un nous de maintenance programme. Nous avons un contrat pour différents euh, noms, Juan Dominique, Masson, chef entier, pour faire travail à l'école, à l'école nous, pour euh, faire assurer que le 8 septembre, tous les enfants, tout le Dominique, peuvent vivre à l'école. Nous avons créé un conducive environment. Ça, c'est un environnement qui, qui là, ça travaille bien. En notre nouvelle, le travail qui a commencé à se chimer de l'Est à Bois Diab. Parole celle-là, sorti au ministre de Public Works, Honorable Ribbon Blackmore. Nous, nous l'argent déjà pour ça. Nous grand heart um, European Union. Et bien, tout de suite, nous um, allons um, sélectionner le contrat là pour partir chimer là au Bois Diab pour de l'Est. Et bien, il est bien important pour nous de l'Est aussi, puisque nous avons un live blanc. Ou l'aïve blanc, ou l'aïve blanc. Um, pour ça, um, pas fort encore. Um, ça, c'est la première activité. Nous allons faire un uh, uh, produit ça. C'est pour, pour bâtir un pont neuf. Un uh, White River de Lys. Ça, nous allons faire aussi, tout de suite, c'est pour mettre ça pour qu'il y ait un bypass. Un uh, pont uh, de Lys. Ce so, monde qui a passé avec le bâtiment. Et bien, passer le euh, marché aussi. So, ça, c'est un bagage qui est bien important pour nous, comme le gouvernement, le bon parti. Ministre de l'Éducation, quand nous avons qui travaille, qui continue à assurer l'école première en Charlotteville, selon le ministre de l'Éducation, honorable Peter Saint-Jean, travaille un travail bien formidable pour nous faire des projet là l'année prochaine. Contrat pour projet Salat ici en l'année 2013, et puis il a expecté pour durer 18 mois. Quand même, le ministre Saint-Jean fait parole que le gouvernement a expecté le projet là pour finir à s'y Et tout dire, l'école Saint-Jean a attendu les sons en la coudouée pour faciliter le bâtiment la bâtiment. Facilité là qui fait allocation pour l'office à mettre l'école, l'occasion teacher, l'occasion secrétaire, 14 classrooms, bibliothèque, lab, cuisine et puis toilette. Finalement, même par le Mapusen Joe, Honorable Kelva Daru, qui a continué et puis programme de livrer bagay pour étudier la constituency là à l'école en septembre. Honorable Daru fait donation à plusieurs négions de l'école Jadia. Ça, c'est un programme si, qui, a, qui a fait toutes ces négions là, ces parents là. Vous avez un, 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 un gros smile en haut de Jayo. Puis, nous avons un ISO. Et puis, le programme ça là, c'est Hot, hot Saint Joe, Hot Layou, Hot Bells, Hot Miro. Tout place dans la constituante Saint Joe là. Et bien ça c'est un bon programme. Puis si on a des parents, et puis ils ont des Et puis nous avons tapé en manière pour assister. Et bien ça c'est un bon manière. Puis si on a des enfants, ils ne peuvent pas avoir un livre, ils ne peuvent pas avoir un sac pour aller à l'école. Et puis là, ils allent à l'école. Il y a tous ses amis, il y a des sacs, il y a des livres, il y a des pensées avec tout ça. Il y a des négociations qui sont appelées. Mais actuellement, nous avons fait un programme pour ces les fortunés de négociations en constituence. Donc, nous avons tapé tout ça, tout ça, les sacs, les livres, tout ça. Et bien, si vous parlez de ces enfants, ces parents, ces parents, ces parents, ils ont un smile. Puis tu regardes ces parents là qui qui fait ça bah yo et ben ça c'est un programme qui va continuer. Mais madame ça c'est tout pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent. Non moi c'est Mac Francis and Lewis. Au revoir. Guidelines to having healthier eating habits coming up next. An unwelcomed visitor has entered our island and is seeking to cause havoc. The giant African snail may move slowly, but it rapidly destroys all in its path. Left unchecked, it can devastate our agriculture. Our farming community is at risk. In large numbers, they are unsightly. 
Because they may also carry a disease which affects humans, our tourism industry is threatened. If this snail is allowed to become established in our land, the consequences are frightening. We all have a part to play to make our land free from this pest. Crush the giant African snail now. Doasco recognizes that clean water is vital to healthy living. Therefore, it spares no effort in providing a clean, safe, and reliable system. Help keep our rivers safe and clean. Do not cut trees along the river banks and do not pollute with garbage, human or animal feces, and chemicals. Think water, think life. Experts agree that the key to healthy eating is the time-tested advice of balance, variety, and moderation. Here are a few tips to help you with that advice while still enjoying the foods you eat. Eat a variety of nutrient-rich foods. Enjoy plenty of whole grains, fruits, and vegetables, and eat moderate proportions. Also eat regular meals. Skipping meals can lead to out-of-control hunger, often resulting in overeating. Reduce, don't eliminate certain foods. Most people eat for pleasure as well as nutrition. If your favorite foods are high in fat, salt or sugar, the key is moderating how much of these foods you eat and how often you eat, you eat them. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash GIS News Dominica. You can also catch up on our past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I am Nisha Charles. And I'm Kimani Senja. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.